night, everybody. This is Cody Nelson here at Cover Crop Kings. talk about carbon release just a little bit here this morning um, driving out here in a corn stalk field it is the 21st of April and we are in central Minnesota right now are we sequestering carbon at this moment no we are not um, if you look down here at the ground there is absolutely nothing growing uh, that is a waste of opportunity and and as many of us have said in this cover crop world and soil health world that no-till by itself is not the answer, especially not for carbon sequestration. So uh, what do we need to do? We need to always have a plant growing. I'm gonna, I'm probably not gonna do this exactly right for scientific terms, but I'm gonna try to middle my way through this a little bit and explain it to my knowledge, the best of my knowledge. So a plant sequesters carbon. Uh, it pumps it down through the soil, through its root exudates and then the carbon is stored in the soil. I, I believe, and don't quote me on this, but I believe the number I heard was 97% of carbon sequestered out of the atmosphere into the, into the soil is through root exudates. Um, so that would mean only 7% of the carbon uh, sequestered is from the above ground biomass. Like I say, don't quote me on that, but that's, that's what I've heard. Uh, that's, that's the number I said. So I wanna talk about this little field here a little bit. It's uh, connected to the farm that, that we run. We get the pasture. We do not farm the tillable uh, on, on this or, or farm ground here. So um, we are just not completely at, at in a situation to manage this ground, not yet. Uh, hopefully down the road we can. And in that case, we absolutely would have had cover crops growing in this situation, at least rye if nothing else. But um, what, how that would have looked is, is we would have got the rye established last fall. Um, somehow, some way, we would have made sure that there is something green growing. And then we would have came into here and planted soybeans and the soybeans would have been continued that gaps. We want to close the gaps. We want to make sure there's always a living root in the ground and whenever we are in any kind of a growing season, remember the growing season is not just um, from, you know, the last frost in the in the spring till the first frost in the fall. We've got an extended growing season with cool season crops. So that's, that's how we're, we're trying, whenever we can have a green living plant and a living root in the soil, we are capturing carbon. We are cycling carbon, putting it in the soil and storing it there for later use. And then the plants are producing oxygen. So uh, I just got to explain this to my seven year old and five year old the other day. And we were Koi and Jace and, and we were talking about it. And actually we were talking about trees and, and I think it was actually Amelia, the 12 year old, she said, well, all plants do this and we should talk about that more often. So how do we carbon, how do we release carbon? And I'll tell you the, the easy way, the easiest and fastest way to release it is actually through tillage. So generally speaking, throughout most of the Midwest, we see a lot of carbon release every spring and fall. And as I mentioned before, I, I, I this is fairly new knowledge. This is new information for the most part. So I don't wanna talk down on anybody still doing this and I especially don't wanna talk down on this person, but, but this particular situation, we are releasing carbon. And I'm gonna show you now, uh, the, the producer that's here, we fed a little bit of hay, added carbon we'll call it, but we fed it a little hay out here, rolled some, some old hay out. But anyhow, um, I kind of realized, you know, this, there's not going to be any credit here to where uh, where we were feeding. So we quickly got back out on the pasture. But this is uh, exact carbon release in the spring. So there was no carbon release last fall, which was good in this situation uh, because the ground was not worked up and, and he was kind enough to let us run cows out here last fall. 
so that that was good we got a little bit of use out of it we turned some of the some of the corn stalks into some cow, cow manure and and there's you know he's going to get a little advantage out of that uh, as a matter of fact he should get a very good advantage out of it but i talked to him when he came out here with the disc and, and i wanted to run that by him and and say i just asked why 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 are you disking it and he said well my planter won't get in the ground if we don't get it worked i want to tell you that is not completely true and a lot of people are worried about that and probably for not a big reason as i explained to him uh, I think he'd have been surprised had he tried it. Um, the, the these planters, I just got an old John Deere 7000. A lot of you have seen my old videos, and and it gets right in the ground, no tails, no problem whatsoever. Um, yeah, you gotta, you know, I tighten the springs as much as I can and try and get some, uh, try and get some as much down pressure. But I said, you know, you'd save a lot of money just in whether you invested in some sort of downforce you know um it'd be well worth your investment and, and you know here we should be doing the cover crops as well but the big reason we see carbon release is just a lack of knowledge and it's it's not anything more than the fact that it's just against what we've always been taught and always been told and you know i don't i don't want I'm not going to talk down about this producer. He's done a really good job for a lot of years and he's still in business and clearly he's doing something right or has been. And a lot of the stuff that we're talking, especially as we start talking about carbon, uh, there's, there's going to be a lot of advantages. I was talking to a gentleman in church here the other day. Uh, he said, you know, your way of farming is, is going, that is the future. And I'll tell you, uh, these guys farm a lot of ground and, and they, to this point do not do any no-till and cover crops and he knows that that's coming and, and i mentioned you know whether it's whether it's forced on us uh whether we're paid to we're we, to a point to to sequester the carbon where we can't afford not to do it um or eventually they'll just start realizing the financial benefits of of no-tilling and using cover crops and sequestering carbon and using that carbon as a bank account in your soil for nutrient for, for decreased nutrient inputs especially as we see skyrocketing nutrient costs and and uh, um, just input costs in general soil health is going to be even more valuable i was really nervous as, as some of these commodity prices started to creep up there i thought you know a lot of these people are going to do whatever they can to grow as much corn and soybeans as they can but right along with it came high inputs just like it always does and so so that's going to be our saving grace but we have to try to do whatever we can to sequester as many nutrients and sequester as much carbon as possible and i think carbon is the new game it's the new game in town it's the one thing everybody's talking about and we got to understand the best way to sequester carbon the fastest way to sequester carbon is to have a living plant in the ground at all times and then not release that carbon through tillage. Tillage is the number one way to decrease or to, to, to lose that carbon. Um, that is where the that is when we release the carbon back into the atmosphere. If you look, there's a map online. I don't know where the website is. You can find it though, the carbon release. and It's a, some carbon measurement map. Um, we're sequestering a ton of carbon in the summer through the United States. And, and basically all, the, all over the world, it's wherever um, wherever there's summer and there's lots of plants growing, we're sequestering a lot of carbon. And then in the spring and fall, especially over the US, in the spring and fall, we lose a lot of it. And, and that's because of our tillage practices. So I know we're gonna make progress. We're continued, we are making progress. Just like this, a couple years ago, we'd have never let the, this farm would never have let us run cows out here in the fall well he would have for a week or two and then he would have came and got a black so we're making progress um i drove through uh west central minnesota yesterday there was a lot of ground that was permanently left on tilled now maybe i see it because i'm looking for it there was definitely a lot of tilled ground and we got a long ways to go but there's other parts of the country that are ahead of us but we're in other parts of the world for sure that are ahead of us. I know some of you are gonna comment on that. So 
anyways thank you guys for watching just a an easy quick elementary way to explain how carbon sequestered it's sequestered through the plants released through the root exudates and and pumped into the soil and by living keeping a living root in the ground as long as possible we're going to sequester as much carbon as possible the key then is to identify how do we close the gaps and make sure that there is a plant growing before the last plant dies we close the loop on that system and we are going to make major major progress and it's not just going to be carbon we're going to see water quality increase we're going to see cash flows improve on farms there's going to be a multitude of benefits throughout agriculture especially the farmers there's going to be it's it's going to affect many many things probably not so positively uh, some of the input suppliers that'd be the only place it's not and that is going to be the one thing that slows it down the most so that's my little rant for today uh, I appreciate everybody that's already subscribed if you haven't please do uh, we're going to try to keep bringing you as many videos as we can so I appreciate everything um, like the video share the video if you would let's get the word out there and if you got any questions you can learn more about us at soilrx.net hey if you need trees look up iversontreefarm.com we can help you with that too give me a call um you know give me shoot me a message whatever comment comments probably the best way and i can get back to you that way so anyways uh hope everybody's having a good spring so far it's a little cold here but hit that subscribe button thank you guys god bless